Hello and warm welcome to join us with this edition of English News and I'm Abdul Ahad Mohammadi. Afghan government on Thursday named Saudi Arabia or Turkey as the best places to set up a Taliban liaison office abroad to enable peace talks to end the devastating 10-year insurgency. President Karzai convened a top-level meeting to discuss how to move forward with a peace process derailed by the assassination of his Peace Envoy Burhan Din Rabbani in September. The meeting came one day after Afghanistan announced it had recalled its ambassador to Qatar in protest at being left out of talks in which the United States discussed plans for the Taliban to open an office in Qatar. U.S. trained Afghan village police have committed some human rights abuses. A U.S. military inquiry has found the investigation followed a report by the Human Rights Watch that alleged some Afghan local police unit had committed abuses including rape and murder. Recommendations made by the U.S. investigation include increased human rights training for the ALP plus strong oversight. The inquiry was carried out without the involvement of the Afghan government. It found seven of the allegations by Human Rights Watch to be credible. They include a case where Afghan police had killed an ALP commander who was trying to release two boys who were kidnapped. Iran escalated its confrontation with the United States on Thursday over the captured U.S. spy drone warning Afghanistan to order a halt to such surveillance flights launched from its territory. Further flights would be regarded as a hostile act, the Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Salehi told Iran's official news agency. His warning threatened to drag Afghanistan directly into the dispute over American aerial surveillance of Iran. There was no immediate response from the U.S. or Afghan government to Salehi's admiration, but U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta on Wednesday said that surveillance flights over Iran would continue despite the loss of the drone. The U.S. Senate on Thursday passed the National Defense Authorization Act for the fiscal year 2012, agreeing to freeze close to $700 million in aid to Pakistan. The bill will now be sent to the White House for President Obama's signature before it becomes law. The bill, which also places sanctions on Iran, calls for a hold on 60 percent of Pakistan counterinsurgency fund over the issue of Pakistan failing to act against the flow of IEDs and raw materials for bombs. The United States seeks new supply roads to Afghanistan after Pakistan closed its airspace. Pakistan's decision means that Central Asia remains the only overland road to Afghanistan for the NATO. The U.S. military is now preparing to boost cargo transportation through the highways, rail and air roads that run between the Baltic Sea and Afghanistan via the Caucasus and Central Asia, the so-called Northern Distribution Network Western Media reported. Pakistani authorities closed the supply roads on November 26. Pakistani Taliban recruits are being trained for suicide missions deep in the hills of South Waziristan. During the combat training, fighters lumped each other down on the ground, chanting, God is greatest. The men are being trained to face the Pakistani army, one of the biggest in the world, Reuters news agency has reported. The Pakistani Taliban, an ally of the Afghan Taliban and Al-Qaeda, pledged to overthrow the government in Islamabad after operations began against militant groups in 2007. Russia offered a new draft resolution on the violence in Syria to the UN Security Council on Thursday, and Western countries said for the first time they were willing to negotiate over it. Although Western envoys said the Russian text was too weak, their readiness to work on it offered the chance for the Security Council to overcome its deadlock and issue the 15-nation panel's first resolution on Syria's bloody crackdown on opposition protesters. The Council has released just one formal statement split between Western countries, harsh, harshly critical of Syria on the one hand, and Russia, China, and non-aligned countries on the other that have refused to put the main blame on Damascus for the violence.
U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said on Thursday the United States will be working closely with Iraqis to ensure the security of civilians in Iraq now that the war there has officially ended. In a wide-ranging news conference after meeting with Denmark's foreign minister, Clinton told reporters that the United States has had strong commitments from the Iraqis. Whatever assistance we need will be forthcoming. U.S. forces formally ended the nine-year war in Iraq on Thursday. More than 70 Syrian army commanders and officials have been named by former soldiers as having ordered attacks on unarmed protesters in that country, a U.S.-based rights group says. The reports from Human Rights Watch named 74 commanders, military and intelligence officials as having allegedly ordered or authorized widespread killing, torture and unlawful arrests during the country's nine months uprising against al-Assad's government. The group urged the UN Security Council to refer the situation in, in Syria to the International Criminal Court and to impose sanctions against officials implicated in the report. And that's all for now. Thanks for being with us.